Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. Hello and a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, this morning we have, with the uh, looming uh, local government elections and a lot of talk of elections and good governance and so on, uh, we have a, uh, uh, let's say, a product of one of Sri Lanka's most iconic political dynasties. Uh, we have with us Mr. Pradeep Jawadna. Very good morning to you, Mr. Jawadna. Morning, Paraz. Good to have you on the program. Thank you. Good to be here. And um, you are indeed from one of the most iconic political families this country has ever produced. Um, how aware are you of that on a, uh, as you lead your life daily? Uh, usually I try to uh, not think too much about that, right. but uh, now that I'm involved in politics and have got down to the grassroots of it, yeah. I'm seeing the uh, enormous uh, respect and the uh, uh, following that my grandfather has, has mm -hmm. had and mm -hmm. still have. Uh, and it cuts across, I think, all uh, groups, you know, whether it is income groups or whether it is party groups, political groups, I'm seeing a huge response to that. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I'm very encouraged by that. Now then, uh, just in case anyone's got any doubts, uh, Pradeep Jayawardena is the grandson of uh, President J.R. Jayawardena. I, I thought I'd get that out of the way. Uh, just in case anyone missed that point. Now then, um, you say you're in politics. Um, it would appear to me that the most logical uh, step would be for you to be in the United National Party. It is, after all, the party of your, uh, of your grandfather. Um, but you're not. Why? Uh, yeah, not only is it the party of my grandfather, it is the uh, ideologically uh, correct party for me to be in. Mm. Uh, but uh, we have a problem with, uh, firstly, with the ideology of the party itself, mm. because uh, I feel that uh, the current leadership has taken it into a different kind of ideology. It is no longer the ideology of uh, J.R. Jawadhan or D.S. Senanayaka or Dudley Senanayaka. And uh, you, feel I, it, you feel it's strayed away very much from those ideas? Very much, very much. And I think it is, at the moment, it is lost. And the, the, the rank and file of the UNP is lost. Um, and why, why do you say, why, would you, why do you think that's happened? Uh, I think the current leadership has a different ideology. And it has, uh, he, they have always had a different ideology, I believe. So there is a... Uh, uh, conflict mm. with the ideology of the current leadership and the uh, real ideology of the UNP. And well, you've never really been involved in politics, have you? Not. Or I have not joined the political party. Have you been a member of the UNP? I have not been a member of the UNP. Right. But I have helped uh, the UNP several on several occasions. Right. Uh, two significant occasions, I think, in 1989. Mm. when uh, Ranasinghe Premadasa, he was Prime Minister at that time, was uh, looking at uh, the presidency and going to contest the presidency. Yeah. Uh, there was a issue with him uh, going against the party and the party line yeah. with the peace accord. And then at that point I helped, I helped him uh, uh, build bridges again mm -hmm. with, with my grandfather, especially because there was a, whole, there was a campaign to take Ran Singh Premadas out of the UNP. Right. So I helped bring him back into that. Uh, also in 94, when uh, Gami Disanayaka contested the presidency, mm. me uh, came to me and he requested that I help him. Right. Uh, I then got involved in his campaign right. and was deep within his campaign uh, helping him. So. Uh, and what did you do? Well, what were you involved in? Uh, we helped him, uh, my wife was also involved in that. We helped actually with the uh, media, electronic media campaign, mm -hmm. uh, especially with TV and radio. We, we completely took over his TV and radio campaign uh, and we ran that. And I think it was very successful. The, the format, the way he uh, presented himself, all of it. Mm -hmm. And um, to say that uh, uh, Actually, it, it, I know it's, uh, it's a story, but it, it's telling one. 
uh, and how little things can uh, change your whole life. Uh, you were due to go for this meeting at Totolang uh, with the family in the Sanaka. Tell us what yes, happened. Why, why didn't you, why weren't you with him? Uh, Gamini was having several meetings out of Colombo during the daytime. Then he would come back for dinner at home and then go for a Colombo meeting in the evening. Mm -hmm. So we had been very deep within his campaign and we didn't understand how the crowd was responding. So at that point we decided we should go for the Totalanga meeting and we had made an appointment with Gamini to meet him at dinner and then go with him for the Totalanga meeting. Mm -hmm. I was work, working with a, a foreign media person and the two of us, unfortunately or fortunately for us, we got late mm -hmm. uh, to come because my, my daughter was very small. She was, I think, a few months old. She played up okay. and we got late to go to meet Garmini and by, when I got to his house, he had already left. So I walked into his house and I turned around and I was going to get back in the car and drive to Totalanga. And my foreign friend stopped me and said, would you mind if we stay in the house and I have some work to do? Mm -hmm. So we walked back into the house and uh, reluctantly stayed in the house. And I, of course I was fast asleep because we were so tired. I fell asleep on the couch and then uh, the news came that this bomb had gone off. And I went with uh, Srima Visanayaka to the accident service. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't go into the room, into the service. I went in there and it was well, it was like going into a, a butcher shop. It was all that. Yeah, all the all the bodies were in one room. It was yeah, how many people died? A total of fifty people. <coughs> um, and so you sort of escaped that by uh, by fate, really. Yeah. By now then, few seconds, maybe. Uh, you've uh, you've sort of. Uh, Never joined the UNP or any political party, you know, taken out membership. But now you are uh, uh, entering active politics, but from, some would say, the wrong party. Uh, you know, not from, not something that would have been yours to the taking. I, what prompted you no, to I do think that? today that you can't say anything is a wrong or right party. I think we have to look at uh, a place where we can do some good for the country. Whether uh, we get an opportunity to be able to... What do you and, see as the most important thing for the uh, Kalamu municipality from a local perspective? What is the most important? Uh, not one, there are several things. I think uh, transport is a big issue. We need to resolve the transport problem because it is taking a massive toll on our people, yeah. on the people who are working in Colombo and uh, businesses in Colombo, the services in Colombo. We have to solve the transport problem quickly. Mm. Uh, housing is another big issue. Uh, we are only thinking of the very large houses coming up. Everybody is seeing the uh, very expensive high-end houses coming up. Mm. But there is a large community of people who are living in Colombo, working and providing service for the low-income uh, people. They have to mm. be provided a good solution. Some things already have been done, but that must be done quickly and accelerated. Uh, retail mm. is another area which I think Colombo is a business city mm. and uh, as the former secretary said Colombo is the, the engine room of the country mm. so we need to keep this engine room humming and uh, retail business needs to be looked after uh, there are a lot of issues in retail there are a lot mm. of issues in approvals there are a lot of issues in operating uh, retail businesses we need to help them uh, Cleanliness is the other issue, which is waste, mm -hmm. and I was uh, able to help uh, waste to energy project, which had been stuck for five years. Mm -hmm. I was able to get uh, the approvals done, convince the necessary uh, parties of the viability of the uh, technology as well as uh, the strength of the investor, mm -hmm. and the project is now uh, moving forward. It is now in implementation phase. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other area, of course, is the uh, civil authority and the services that are being provided by the municipality. We need to be able to get efficient, quick and uh, good service from the municipality. And that mm. is something that we must create. So I think those are the key areas. Um, 
your uh, your grandfather today today is a a, 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 a sort of a day a very it's high. okay I I don't want to say special but it's a, it's a day that we we must bear in mind um, your grandfather had the courage and uh, the conviction if I remember rightly uh, he was coming. Uh, challenging Mrs. Uh, Barunaika, who has been in power for a while, for a while and uh, it, it seemed impossible to dislodge. But uh, with uh, his uh, courage and his conviction and that uh, he had for change, and his plans for uh, uh, the opening up of the economy um, saw, saw him through and with his, the Satyagra campaigns and so on. Equally, uh, <clears throat> equally, the media world will uh, remember, especially here at News First uh, in our group, uh, that uh, we had somebody here uh, who reflected this, the courage and the vision, uh, and that's uh, our chairman, uh, Mr. Rajamahendran, who um, didn't shirk from, any, uh, from anything. And he uh, led this team right from the front. And um, we were burnt, bombed, um, attacked, and everything else. Claymore bombed. Uh, but nothing uh, got in his way. Uh, and um, his commitment has never uh, wavered. And uh, the, the team at News First, uh, they are... Um, they, we gain our strength from that commitment, um, and so we are given as much freedom as we wish to have uh, whatever is necessary to go that extra mile and not just report the news but to explain it and to, uh, to hold uh, public officials to scrutiny, uh, which is very important and, and long way to live. In, in the meantime, of course, we must bear in mind that uh, one of uh, the, the friends of our group, uh, presenter, I believe the original presenter of Newsline, uh, La Santa Vikramatunga, lost his life uh, uh, as well, um, which would be uh, tomorrow. So we have people with courage, we have people with uh, uh, conviction, but how come that isn't uh, now on the political arena? What do you see is the problem here? Well, why well, can't we have the, another uh, JR or another uh, Premadas? Well, the problem is the water, isn't it? What is it? They, they need to put the right people into the right places. But don't so. you think that it is the it is the party themselves because they keep uh, putting it on 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 the uh, it's like a menu, you know. You put out the same names or names that are uh, tainted with uh, all sorts of. Uh, allegations of corruption and nepotism and so on. No, I see, uh, Faraz, we've had a problem in for many years, for decades now, because we've had, a, we've had governments, uh, but we haven't had uh, effective opposition for a very long time. And uh, the opposition was unable, the UNP, uh, the, the, the greatest and the most powerful party in this single party in this country, uh, was not able to win an election for 25 years. The, my grandfather, when he took the, the party over in 1970, I think 72 or 73, he took yeah. it over when uh, Dudley Selenayaka passed away. Yeah. He turned this into a, a powerful election winning machine. You know, and he tested it. He tested it at by-elections. He resigned from his seat and tested it. Uh, and by the time it 77 came, it was a, a powerful machine. I remember a good story that he uh, said once. He was walking down the one of the corridors in Parliament, and on the other side came Mrs. Bandar Naik. Mrs. Sirima Bandar Naik, Prime Minister, was walking the other way, and she suddenly saw him and she waved her finger at him and said, "I know what you are doing." So, so he said, "Madam, what am I doing?" Uh, he said, "You are taking these educated." English speaking, good people, young people into your party. I must do the same. So that 
is how he built that party. He brought people in. He went out in search of people who were capable, who were talented. He brought them in. Yeah. Gave them positions, encouraged them, and created a party. So a party is made out of this type of people. You can't have a just a board and a sign and a color and a big media show and call it a party. This is what has happened today. So that is the reason uh, he built the UNP to that strength. And today we have a situation where this party, for 25 years it couldn't win an election. So there is something wrong, fundamentally wrong with the, the structure or the makeup of this party. And we need for us both a powerful opposition and a powerful uh, government. Indeed. One of the uh, problems I see with the Mahindra Rajapaksa government was that they didn't have a powerful opposition. If a powerful opposition was there, they would have kept them on their toes and we would mm -hmm. not have had the issues that we had with the Mahindra Rajapaksa government. So I think that's the answer to your question. We need to have two sides which balance each other. But as you can see, um, the, the viewers asking me, saying that the UNP was your heritage and you, you've cast your heritage aside. Um, was no, that, was no, that actually difficult? No, the UNP is not my heritage. My grandfather's vision is my heritage. I see. And I will never cast that aside. So I, I understand where he came from, why he did what he did, and I'm willing to take it forward. And if what, I can what? take it, I believe I can take it forward through the SLFP today. Yeah. And uh, President Maitripala Sirisena is listening to this thinking. Today the, the ideologies of the two parties are not far apart. The SLFP is, is no, no longer for a, a closed economy. It mm. has adopted the open economy. No, nobody has any choice anymore. Yeah. Uh, the SLFP is also a defender of the presidential system of government, which I believe is essential for the strength, the stability, and the future of this country. So and they defend the presidential system, and I believe that this is the greatest creation of my grandfather, and I believe that we need to preserve it. The, your, your grandfather is also often blamed for uh, the uh, virtually untrammeled powers of the executive presidency, and uh, they say that this is, this is what that sort of group of people say. They say, well, you know, it's JR's fault because he brought this in, and it's completely this this all-powerful presidency um, is his fault. What do you uh, say? Unbroken uh, growth for 40 years is a result of this powerful system of government. Right. Uh, you know, we have had growth without. We have actually. That's not correct. We have had one year of negative growth, yeah. which was the year that I think with the power crisis and yeah. uh, uh, the government in 2001 or, two, or yes, 96. Yeah. We had one year. Other than that, we have had continuous growth. So this is a result of this uh, powerful system. Also, we were able to defeat the world's most powerful terrorist army yeah. and uh, a separatist movement which would have destroyed most countries. What you're saying so, is that because of that the strength of the presidency. The strength of the presidency and the strength of that form of government. Yeah. Also, the, uh, to say that this is uh, uh, too much power, yeah. is, uh, I, I don't agree with that because there, there was a uh, provision in that. There, there is a two-term limit. So yeah. however much power you have in two terms, you're gone. So, so, uh, so then you wouldn't have agreed with the, uh, with the uh, uh, 18th Amendment then? Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, so, you, so you're committed to that, but what do you think your grandfather would say when he looks at the, uh, the fact that the United National Party, even after the so-called, uh, the, the, so much of concern about the excesses of the Rajapaksa government and so on, and the removal of the uh, two-term limit and so on, uh, what would your grandfather say that because even with all that, so sort of in their favor, the UNP were unable to uh, to get a majority even in parliament. They're, they're the largest party, yes, but they're, they're, they don't be, have... He would be very upset at what has happened to his party. He would be very, very upset. Because I know he's thinking, I spent a lot of time with him after his retirement. And 
in 93 when uh, President Premadas was assassinated and his body was still lying in state, uh, the funeral had not even taken place. He sent for Gamini Disanayaka. Gamini was then out of uh, the UNP, he was with the uh, Rajalia party. Yeah. He got him home and his words were, Gamini, go into the UNP now. Mm -hmm. So, he did that because he believed that the party needs people like Gamini, that Gamini should be in the UNP. The UNP has to be strengthened by people like Gamini. Unfortunately, Gamini hesitated and for some time he finally did go into the UNP, but he didn't go as quickly as he would have hoped he would. I'm going to ask you, uh, uh uh, one of my viewers wants to know where you studied. Uh, Royal College. You, you, are, you are also a product of Royal College. That's right. My goodness me. My, this question is this. Do you think that in, in current terms, one of the greatest uh, benefits of having had or having the executive presidency is none other than and better, no better highlighted than when one examines the bond scam. Yes, I guess the presidency allows uh, the uh, government to be above the day-to-day -day running of government and, and to look at uh, something from a completely national point of view. And as my grandfather said, it allows you to take the difficult and unpopular decisions that the country must take to go forward. So, I'll use his own words, I think, would be very apt. They, uh, uh, a lot of people who contact us say that if it was not for the president, Maitri Sena, the bond scam would have never been yeah. uncovered. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, the progress that, and there is definitely progress, uh, and um, it's all due to the fact that the president is committed to uh, addressing this issue, which has obviously caused uh, a huge uh, national uh, interest in this matter. That's right. People may not know uh, the the difference uh, or the, the the finer nuances of uh, bonds and so on, but the average Joe public out there uh, understands that there was that the central bank was subject to some form of robbery. Yeah, it's quite amazing what the media has done, and I think you have played a huge a very big role in this. Yeah, News First has been uh, fully committed uh, uh, virtually on a daily basis and no matter what the subject was we were able to draw a parallel to uh, the bond because of course the bond was all about money right. and, and mm -hmm. money is something that this country doesn't have vast uh, and copious quantities of mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, when, it, when the people uh, realized very quickly that the uh, attitude of this government to addressing that problem was rather flippant at best uh, and the inaction on the part of uh, the Prime Minister as the, as the Minister in charge of the subject of the Central Bank um, <coughs> is absolutely inexcusable. In, in simple terms uh, when the media, we, we first uh, reported about this problem on the 8th of March 2015 and uh, Straight away, uh, the Prime Minister appointed his uh, three-member pity committee. But even then, the Prime Minister didn't bother to ask Arjuna Mahendran whether his instructions, previous instructions, to ensure that this conflict of interest position with his son-in-law and so on, he asked it to be removed, and he didn't check and didn't insist even at that stage. And had he done that, uh, the second uh, bond, the second and third bonds a year later would certainly not have happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he just moved <coughs> away from one system which had been in place since 1997. Um, yeah, for us, I think this type of uh, uh, situation, when you're talking about the uh, governor of the central bank, and you're talking about the central bank, and you're talking about the country's finances, if there's any doubt as to the impartiality yeah. or any vested accusations or vested interest in any way. Uh, I think it, uh, you cannot have that person sitting in that position. It cannot be, it has to be immediately rectified. And I think my grandfather would have done that. He would never have allowed somebody with that kind of uh, connection to be in that place. So 
he would have taken very quick action and would have said, no, you simply can't do that job in that place. If you have a, a relative, a such close relative involved in the business of Central Bank, you can't do it. <coughs> uh, really? I'll give you an interesting analogy. I, I work for uh, one of the largest uh, companies in the world, which is the Shell, Shell yeah. Group. Yeah. And I worked, one of my companies was with them. Uh, the finance manager, who was a Dutch individual, was in Colombo. Uh, he was heading the entire finance of Shell Gas at, at that time. Uh, one day he told me they had to obtain a loan from three different banks, mm -hmm. a very large loan. And he told me, my boss has asked me to prove to him that I cannot have taken any kind of commission from these two banks. Now, he's taking the loan. Yeah. He has been asked to prove in writing yeah. to his boss that he could not have made, had any benefit from taking this loan. Right. So, any kind of commission or any uh, kickback. So, this is the, uh, the scrupulousness of the financial world today. You cannot have any doubt that there is uh, uh, any kind of risk or uh, I think the, uh, at the highest level. Why do you think, now I mean, Mr. Vikramasinghe is actually, uh, is he your uncle? Your, he's your relative. Is That's right. Yeah. So you may know him better than the average person on the road. Why do you think he's so loyal to his friends, even disregarding the overriding national interest. I'm talking about Bond. Yeah, I think that's his team, his own own uh, security team and his uh, uh, close group. So is that the price that we have to pay, we as the public? I think people, when they get in, into politics, you have this kind of uh, group forming around them. And uh, in fact, again, my grandfather was uh, asked to create a president's office in the early days of creating the presidency. And uh, he said no to it. He said that I will not create the president's own, own men or the president's own women. He actually made a, declared as a statement, he had a speech where he declared these things. We saw that happening to other presidents as well, a group forms around them, and then the president gets isolated. Uh, my grandfather said that he would always have the cabinet as his own, his men and women, and not his own group. And we see that in the U.S., the White House yeah. is a different uh, team. It's very damaging to the president because it's a separate group that formed. It's an unelected group, and they then uh, support and insulate uh, the president. Do you firmly believe that drawing on your uh, experiences and your closeness to one of the greatest <coughs> leaders of this country? Um, and the father of the open economy in, in this country. Do you honestly feel that you will make that difference? I think I can make a difference. I honestly feel that I can make a difference. I'm convinced uh, of that because I have had some experience. I've done some things which have made a difference to this country. So I believe that uh, if I have some amount of political power, I can make a difference, and you need political power. Without political power, I think you cannot do a lot. You can do something, but there is a limit to what you can do. But so there is a problem, <coughs> in short, with the engine of the country, Colombo. There's something wrong with that engine right now. I think so. There are a lot of things wrong with it. Can I read a, a, a short very, statement? Very, very quickly, yes. Okay. yes. So, it's... Colombo is not just the most economically important city in Sri Lanka, it is the engine room of the country's economy. The city is badly congested, has poorly regulated, has overburdened infrastructure, lacks affordable housing, and suffers from generally poor land allocation and utilization. So that, in a nutshell, is the problem of the engine. Words of former secretary of Urban it could be said by anyone because uh, the Joe public on the road in Colombo will all, will all agree with that. That's right. So I think that uh, describes very uh, beautifully the situation in Colombo and the problems that we need to solve. And you are committed <coughs> to putting that right? We must put it right. This is, our, this is our city and if this city doesn't work, then uh, the country doesn't work. 
Very Jawad, thank you very much for having been on Newsline. It's wonderful to see that uh, uh, you're you're flying the family flag in terms of uh, the overriding national and public interest. Thank you very much for having been on Newsline. And uh, that's about it. Uh, that's the way it was on Newsline on uh, the 8th of January 26, uh, 2018 today. Take care and God bless. Thank you, guys. <laughs>